It looks like Poor Arms is about to do a bake rack right down here. Cats around. I came to the tail end of this right here, and it's a bake rack. It came out as a signal 20 or mentally ill person. When I arrived, they were sitting on the uh, sidewalk there chatting with them.
So once again, I'm standing here really quietly. You can hear that or see that they don't really know I'm here. So officer safety is one of those things that are paramount. I always check around every once in a while. Except for the law enforcement that are watching this, that's one of the great things. I am carrying, I have a concealed weapon permit. I always carry. But in the event that it was a bad guy, just always scan your surroundings every once in a while. If I said open carry, I conceal carry. And have a permit to do so. All right, so Baker Act, what Baker Act is, if you're not familiar with it, it's just a uh, protective custody, essentially, where they're going to, uh, if involuntary, take him to Halifax Hospital here. They have the uh, medical center that, that treats mental illnesses, and they're going to hold him there for about 72 hours. Uh, they can up to that amount. This gentleman here has been Baker Acted before, so he is going to uh, uh, go through the process, knows exactly what's going on, and then from there, uh, be evaluated by a doctor, see if they can get him on some type of uh, medication that might stabilize or calm and go from there. And now the forms that you use when you're filling this out, it's, like, it's usually a single page. I don't know what it is now, but it was a single page carbon copy. And uh, you just write about three or four lines of what it was. He's endangered himself, made these uh, whatever two or three key statements while talking to law enforcement. And uh, that... Uh, it's in the best interest to have him in protective custody. So the female officer is coming back down here. She uh, went down there and dropped something off to uh, the person that uh, that they were talking to, or where he lives, anyway. In case we need a vehicle 57 and 54. Port Orange Police. I don't know the female's name. I don't really care. I don't know his name. I don't really care. But uh, they were here last night. They were waving at me. I think the male was. So that I'm not shining it into the house. I'll give you a description of what's going on. Uh, there's a female in a red shirt. And she's in somewhat of an empty room. And... I would suspect that it's a mom and uh, there's a juvenile inside as well so they got kids in this situation as well so hopefully uh, we'll get some help and that's at the home where uh, the officer went to to drop some personal belongings off Let's see if we can get around here And if you do get in the system for Baker Act, they can come after firearms and whatnot and all that stuff. So it's just one of those things. Get help voluntarily if you can, and that really helps out. That way you don't go through the system of it and get to a psychologist. A psychologist or therapist if you can talk to someone um, before law enforcement gets involved because then it makes it, uh, makes it a little bit easier on yourself uh, to get yourself straight. Because definitely mental, mental illness is, uh, is very high now, and including um, uh, during the COVID times. So they're going to go ahead and transport this person out there, and we're going to be out of here. That's it for this call. We'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was a Baker Act, Port Orange Police Department.